And after signing, I did read it. I'm like, wow, what did I get myself into? Okay, I signed the paperwork. I'm all in, 100% all in, head first. So let me go out here and- What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. So if you want to make more money and uh, keep the money that you make, better call Saul. <laughs> all right. How, how do you pronounce your name? Aki. Aki in the building. Yeah. Okay, Aki. Um, I appreciate you um, reaching out, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, uh, you know, let's get a little background about you. So your your phone is pinging you in Georgia. That's that's where you from? No, actually, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Let me give a <coughs> let me let me go to the old school. Pe only people in Cleveland knows this. Yeah, big fucking little, little job. job. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, only people, like I said, only people in Cleveland knows that, man. So what's going on with you? You, yeah. um, let's just jump right into it, man. So VL Trucking, uh, I, I, I didn't expect VL Trucking to be back in the mix. Um, yeah. You know, you know, rest yeah. in heaven, uh, a trucker named Jay. Uh, he used to, yeah. you know, promote VL trucking to the fullest. Uh, yeah. I, I believe he was, I believe he had a couple of trucks that he leased and he uh, leased out to a couple of drivers up under the company. Uh, so mm -hmm. was you on with VL trucking doing, you know, doing this time there or, or this is after, a after he passed? No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. No, I, I was there. Well, I, I was I was on up on the VO trucking before he before he passed. Okay. Did did you get a chance to uh yeah. did did you get a chance to meet him or or no? No, no, no. I never met him. I only seen him on YouTube, but I never got a chance to meet him. You know, occasionally I would run into some of the other um lease owners up on the VO trucking, but never never had a chance to meet him personally. Okay, okay. That's what's up, man. So VL trucking. So you every I, I guess everything was good about a week ago. <laughs> so you wanted to you, you wanted to come on and uh share your chest your your testimony with them. So uh yeah what what happened and what and where did it turn? Yes, I um, I was listening to one of your um your shows. You had a guest on there. She, I believe, she was from Tupelo, Mississippi, and she just, you know, it went into saying how she was with VL Trucking for about maybe three or four weeks, and she got a lawyer involved. And just for the record, everything that she said, as far as her experience with VL Trucking, is absolutely true, one hundred percent, one hundred percent true. Okay. I got into VL Trucking. Um, and just like, just like she mentioned, uh, I felt kind of, um, rushed through the process to sign paperwork and so forth and so on. Um, I did sign like her and guess my, went against my own instincts, signed before I read it. That's my, my mistake. And after signing, I did read it. I'm like, wow, what did I get myself into? Okay. I signed the paperwork. I'm all in 100% all in head first. So let me go ahead and prior to uh, relocating to, to, to Georgia, being in Cleveland, when I moved from Cleveland to Georgia, I got married five years ago, 2017. And I told my, <clears throat> you know, my wife that, that hey, let me, let me get on the road and I, that's why I can really make some money. But, you know, being, being newly married, you know, your, your wife don't want you out there on the, on the road. They want right. to be your honeymoon phase. Right, right. So, um... She finally gave me her blessings to go out on the road. I said, hey, give me three months. I'm going to prove to you that I can make money doing this. I get on the road. Everything is going great. Everything is going great. Now, I, let me, uh, now let, me, wait. let me ask you this yeah. right quick. Let me, let me. Uh... Wait a minute. Wait a minute.
You know, this is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. I've had, I can't tell you how many cups of coffee in my life, and this, this is one of the best. Uh, interject right quick. So, VL Trucking, you, you did start off with them as a company driver, right? Before you went Leasewood? No. No, no, I started off as a lease. Oh, you lease you went operator. in you went in whole, uh, wholeheartedly as a as as a lease driver. Yes, sir. Yes. All right, yes. let me let me pick your brain right quick and I'll let you get back to your story. There is a I guess I want to say unconfirmed rumor going around in the rumor mill. Uh hopefully you can, can confirm this, but I'm I'm hearing that VL Trucking forced all their company drivers to be lease drivers now. Is that true? I'm, I'm not sure. If if it did happen, it probably happened after I decided to sever ties with them. Okay. 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 All right. You can go ahead. Yeah. Go, you go ahead back to your story. <clears throat> um, okay. So I um, got into got on the road with, on the VL truck and I'm delivering and um had to wait two weeks to get my first pay which uh, i was like okay whatever um got my first pay I, my first pay i, I showed my wife a, um, a settlement of twenty three hundred dollars uh, all right following week it increased about maybe i believe it was thirty three hundred Okay, now she she getting a smile on her face is getting bigger and bigger. Okay, okay. She's seeing, um, she's seeing the like money said, coming in. She's seeing the money coming in. She's seeing the money coming in. I'm proving myself not just to my wife, but to the to to be a trucking as well because I okay. Just they, give they, me my little information and I, and I'm gonna go get it. They they it up, they see you in. run. They they see you running. They they say that this 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 they, this they the see guy. You running. This the guy. Okay. Yes. Yes. They see me running, and I was running so hard. Um, I would go on the road maybe sometimes two weeks, three weeks, occasionally four weeks at a time. Um, this particular time, March came up. You know, in March, you know, you had the, um, the March Madness going on, and a lot of companies do, do, do um, things or competition things around the March Madness. So Vita Trucking decided to do a competition among the um, – the uh, company drivers, as well as the the lease the lease owners, as well. Okay. And okay. and the competition consists of whoever run the most miles and the and and make the the highest gross wins are all expense paid trip for to to pretty much wherever you want to go. Okay. Sounds sounds comparable. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sounds real good. My dispatcher, he called me up and explained to me the rules and all the particulars to it. Came up with a plan. I said, okay, let's execute it. Long story short, I won a competition. All right, congratulations. So, okay. I, thank you. And, and I only mentioned that to, 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 to share with you that when I'm, when I'm behind the wheel, I go. When I'm behind the wheel, I go. And sometimes I'll pick, I get there and pick your load up a little bit early and deliver it a little bit early. If I stop, I'm only stopping for fuel and shutting down for the night. So, and it seems like after I um, had the competition, things started to go downhill. Around that time, that's when the, um, the fuel prices started to, to go up. So my money, my money started to look a little funny along the way. Fuel so prices, it, it really fuel happened. prices, and rates going down. Uh, fuel prices, well, rates yeah. going down. Fuel prices going up, and 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 yes, your, your 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 bottom line is start to start to go down, and you 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 starting to uh, notice that effect. Uh, did you did you kind of like you know made your concerns known to the fleet manager? Like you know, hey, you know, we need to. You know, we know that the fuel prices is going up, you know, but we, we still need to keep myself relevant. Did did you uh did you express that to him? Yes, and yeah, I, I expressed that um and also to my dispatcher, um, like, hey, the fuel prices are going up, it's eating into my my, my profit 
as much as 50%, maybe 50 to 55% is cutting my my profit more than half, and which is which would be a big effect on anyone. And um, they they talk well, the gas prices are going up. We still we just had to push harder and continue to um, pick up and deliver these loads. The rates are going down, but you run so hard, you know you you're, you're going to be okay. So I, I, I fed into it. I admit, I kept on. I drove even harder, and I bring it to their attention again. Driving harder. Meanwhile, in the midst of all this. I'm noticing my profit is going down more and more and more and more. You, you, so by you this said, time, my mom. You, you said in the background, uh, you said in the background that they were starting to, uh, starting to uh, see money off the top and bottom of uh, of your right. uh, of your of your thing, and then at one point they you you pretty much bottom out and you went and went into debt. Like what? Like, when did you start seeing and how did you know that, you know, that they was taking money off the top and bottom of uh, of, of, of your settlements? Well, once at, at one point, you know, um, at one point I was I had got as low as eleven thousand dollars in debt. But I'm, I'm continuously running hard and I'm trying to figure out how in the world am I going to be on a roll for three, four weeks at a time? And I'm coming home with no money and I'm still in debt. I'm negative money every week. So I had actually I had just delivered a load in, in Cleveland. I'm looking at my statement. I call my dispatcher. I'm talking to him, me and him. We exchanged some words. I said, you know what? I'm going home. I drove home. I sat down for about two weeks. And I'm just on, on YouTube and I I I I'm listening to you have a conversation with another guest, a gentleman. He was on your show and he had shared with you how VO trucking, it was him and his wife. His wife pretty much did the paperwork, I guess. And he did all of the driving. And he had shared with you how VO trucking was taking money off the top of each loan. Yeah, off the off him. the top. Yeah, off his, the top his, of their uh uh, Raycons. So, like for example, Off they the top of the Raycon. Yeah, the, yeah. For example, the, the 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 broker or whoever they call. Uh, let's and I'm just using ballpark numbers. Uh, I know I know the I know the episode. I forgot his name, but I know the episode. But I'm just using ballpark numbers that they will offer VL Trucking a a load for like three thousand dollars. They would accept it, then they'll turn around and and offer you the load for anywhere from like five hundred to a thousand dollars less than what they got the load for. You accept it. Exactly. You <laughs> accept it, and they will still double dip by taking whatever the percentage that you guys agreed 20%. upon. Yeah, the twenty they still yeah. will take their twenty percent off of off of whatever they already took. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's uh yeah, that's crazy. That's that's something that that's something that that um that's being done over at controversial company Super Eagle. They 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 does the same thing over there. It's not <laughs> it's not to the extent you know I'm I'm hearing different yeah. uh a different uh different amounts but it's basically boils down to the same thing uh, that these uh, that these you know black op companies right. uh, would would do to you guys. It's crazy. It's yeah. not it's, fair. I it's mean, just that, it's definitely right. no. It's it's not fair. Yeah, it's definitely it, it not really fair. Has, you know, you going home. It really you, has. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, I just want to say that it is it's it's so unfair that because I put. I put, when I say I put everything into it, you know, I'm an old school guy from Cleveland, so you know how hard when we put our heart into something, you know how we do. Mm -hmm. I put we get everything down. into this. Yep, everything into it. I I went into it so hard. My plan B was my plan A. Mm. I went into it hard, and I'm doing it. Money, as I said before, money was coming in, and then all of a sudden I, I hit this wall for for some reason. 
Yeah, eleven thousand dollars in debt. That's a hell of a wall to hit, bro. <laughs> yeah. I mean you I got look myself at, out of debt though. Yeah, I mean you looking at you, you looking at like neg you looking at like negative settlements like every week. How is that possible? How yeah. how are yeah. you live how are you living yeah. like that? You just basically yeah. driving for free. Because is that let me ask you this. Is that I, is I, is that is that be is that the fault of you not not being able to uh uh figure out and 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 control whatever you know what the money that you're supposed to be getting or do you or do you just put all that on to the company because of the money that they're taking from you damn good coffee and hot i would say the majority of the fault would be on the company and the reason why i say so is because they are sort of like predators to people who are new into becoming an owner operator. Okay. When you okay. have, because I, I I've done everything. I dotted my eyes and crossed my teeth prior to getting into this thing. I I believe I did my homework. But when they are, when some people have hidden motives and are crafty with it, it sometimes get kind of hard for you to figure it out. Because mind you, I'm on the road. I'm focusing on driving. I'm a hazmat driver. I got to, everything I do is, is escalated times 10 because I'm held to a higher standard because of just the hazmat endorsements alone. So my time and energy is focused on that. So I'm not really, my thought is I'm not really counting my dollars and my cents to the T every day like I should have. I will admit that part. But when you go into a business venture with someone and they tell you they're going to do this, that, and the third, I'm expecting for you to do that because I'm going to do for you what I'm telling you I'm going to do. That's and they didn't do that because they decided to skim off the top and hit me on the back end with the 20% and plus pay an extra 10% on any monies I needed to spend for maintenance. Wow. That's crazy. And, All right. So let me let me. And when let I me, got me, myself out of the eleven thousand dollars in debt, I, when I got out of eleven thousand dollars in debt, I came home for a week. I go back on the road for two weeks, and I'm back in debt again. <laughs> crazy. Let me this, ask this you. This happened. This happened four times. Wow. But let me ask you this: how, how long? How long before you uh, decided to sever ties with them? How, how long was you with the company? Uh, before you realize that, you know, hey, th this ain't work. This ain't going to work out for me. It's it about a year and a half. It was about a year and a half. Wow. Okay. It, it was about a year. Because like I said in the beginning, things were going great. Before the gas prices started to go haywire, things were going great. So, and I'm only assuming that during that particular time, they were still skimming off the top. So I'm paying my 20% on the tail end. But I was still bringing home money and i think that with the fuel prices going up this is just my theory with the fuel prices going up it exposed a lot of people crookedness in the industry right but mind you i'm paying all this money with the fuel but we're not getting fuel in did they and did they, they offer you how I, did they offer you any fuel uh incentives no no one on the vo trucking as a as an owner operator or lease owner operator is getting fuel incentives at all Wow, so y'all y'all paying y'all y'all paying full fare for the fuel uh for the fuel. Paying full fare. And I think one of the things that made them up made them upset with me is because they give you a fuel card and you use that fuel card to have a partnership with Pilot Flying J. You can go there, fill up, get your fuel and your diesel. And if for whatever reason why you're on a road, you, you need fuel, but there's no pilot flying jet around, you can go to a Love or another fuel station to get fuel, but you can only get 50 gallons right. per day. Right. Somehow, I don't know how I figured it out, but I figured it out that if I were, cause I'm trying to be savvy and save all my fuel so I could bring home a greater profit. Mm -hmm. Somehow, I'm talking to one of my one of, one of my last brothers out of California who ran all 48 states like myself, he was saying like, hey, no, just go to a, a, a quick trip or a Philip 66. 
their fuel is always cheaper than Love and Pilot Flying J. Right, right. So I said, well, I'm going to go there and get me 50 gallons worth of fuel there. And then when I need more fuel, I just get some more fuel, get, some, get at least 50 more gallons of fuel at Pilot Flying J so I can get me a free shower for the day as well. And that'll be 100 gallons of fuel for the day. I never let my truck drop less than a half a tank of fuel per day. Now, let me ask you this question right so quick. I, um, like, uh, I, I talked to, of course, you know, I, I talked to a lot of drivers uh, that that drove for controversial trucking company, Super Eagle. And they say that if you're not on load with, with Super Eagle, they they don't turn they they turn your fuel card off like they they literally turn it off and you won't be able to use it until you go and get a load do vl trucking uh do they do do they have some type of practice like that like do they turn off your your fuel card if you're not uh, no. on a load or anything like that or are you able to use the fuel card anytime you want when you're near a pilot no, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've never experienced that in VL trucking. I've never experienced that. I was I have always been able to use my fuel card. The only time I had not been able to use my fuel card is if I stopped at a small mama pop fuel station and they don't have the same logo on the back so they can't accept the fuel card. But other than that, I've never experienced that. Okay, that's what's up. I've never that's what's up. That. All right. So But I, I I found out how, how I found out how I uh, what was really going on when it all came to light to me. I had gone back on the load after this fourth time of me getting pulling myself out of debt. I was delivering a load in Cincinnati. I think it's Tipton, Tipton Cincinnati or Tip Cincinnati. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar Cincinnati. with that. Yep. And I got my settlement. And I'm looking like, wait a minute, hold on, how am I been negative? At this point, I was, it was three hundred and twenty-six dollars in in the negative. I said, wait a minute, hold on. Jeez. I called the account department, man. and the lady, and the lady, I called the account department, and I spoke to the ladies, like asking her, like, pretty much, hey, what's going on? Like, why am I always in neg? Why I'm going in the negative all of a sudden? And I don't know. If she, I, I'm not sure if she told me something she should supposed to have told me or what, but what she shared with me was prior to me going to VL Trucking, when I first started with VL Trucking, you would get your load information from the dispatcher and they'll just send it to you via text message. Right. When you get your load, when you get your load delivered, picked up and delivered, you got to, you know, show proof of your, your, be, your bill of lading. They get a you sign the bill of lading, and you deliver, you mail it to them on the 15th and the 30th of every month in a, in a trip pack. So I, I'm doing that. And then after, I think of maybe about three or four months later, they changed to a, a system called McLeod. And you just get all of your load information in this particular system. And you upload it in this system, and it goes straight to the accounting department. What was happening in my case was my dispatcher was not uploading the information into the, into the McLeod system. So by not being in the McLeod system, I'm unable to upload it into the system on my end. I can go straight to the accounting department. Right. But I was still mailing it to them in the mail on the 15th and the 30th of each month. Or I would take a picture of it and email it to them when the accounting department always called me but texting me about my bill of lady. Right. Long story short, what she told me was, if it's not in the McLeod system, how do we know we got it? I said, well, if it's not in the McLeod system, how am I supposed to put it in there? So, well, you, your dispatcher is supposed to put it in there. I said, well, it's not in there. You can go and check yourself. So the dispatcher not putting it in the, in the system, I can't give it to them. So by the time they get it and go through all their drivers, it's two, three weeks down the line. Why is two, three weeks down the line? I'm still being charged for fuel every week. How much I'm, is I'm it? spending about 25, 25. I spent anywhere between 25 and three, almost $3,000 a week in fuel. Can I take your order? Can I get a tall chai? And a large black coffee. 
A what? Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? No, I mean a large. He means a venti. Yeah, the biggest one you got. A venti is large. No, venti is 20. Jeez. How, how much is your... Yeah. I'm, uh, not not just fuel, but how, how much is your payments every week on on top of fuel, oh. truck, if the all oh, that stuff? Lady. What's 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 all my, of that? My, my uh my my lease my lease was eight ninety nine a, a week because I had a two thousand nineteen freight on a Cascadia. Okay. Took care took care of all my maintenance and everything. And one thing about me, I I stayed on top. Believe in preventive maintenance. So about whenever. In the beginning, I would just pay for it out of my pocket because I didn't want to pay the extra 10% through the company. But then when the money started getting funny, I had to pay the extra 10%. Jeez, they so hit doing you all this hard with week. the fuel, bro, bud. They hit, they but hit how many? me hard. They hit me hard, hard. Okay, so if so that's... what I didn't understand was how hard... I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, okay, that's... Okay, we see that they hitting you hard with the fuel and 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 everything else how was they aren't they supposed to kind of like offset that with the with, with with your loads like i mean would i mean you get you you get paid what uh you say they take 12% so you getting like what 80 88% of the load no, they, they they take twenty percent. Oh, okay, so you get eighty. Load. So you get eighty percent of the load. How many loads are you running a week, bro? Because that's that's crazy that that, that you're not running enough loads to the the offset what they what they taking out of your pay, man. You you should not be a lease driver yeah, making percentage exactly. going home with negative three hundred dollars, bro. I I was I was running prior to the fuel prices going up. I was running about maybe three, maybe four loads a week, maybe, running all 48 states. After the fuel prices went up, I was running four, maybe five loads a week because the fuel, because the race, the race went down, the mileage on the loads were cut short, as they're telling me. So I got to run more and got to run harder. And I'm telling them, like, look, if I run any harder, I'm going to be illegal. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill somebody else. And I'm not about to do that. I but can't you, run any harder than when I'm running. But you are. But, but you running hard. But, money. but you running hard, right? You you running hard right now with 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 no money. What what, what is running harder no going to? What's what's running harder going to accomplish? More money in their pocket. I, I believe that, mm, okay. that because they knew that I was a hard runner and they can go to maybe one of their top customers and say, hey, I got this driver. I key. He's in your area. He's going to be there. He delivered for you before. No problems. No issues. Let's do it for X, X, you know, whatever the price, whatever they may say the price is. But then when they call me, like you say, they'll call me and tell me a lesser amount. Mm. And then I'm paying another twenty percent on the tail end because when I say I ran, bro, I ran hard. My mm. friends are called me today. Two days later, I might be in, in Iowa somewhere. They're amazed at how man, how you get there so fast, bro. I go, <laughs> I go. <laughs> sound like this. And sound this, like this run. Sound like I, this one driver. He he goes to the, he goes to sleep in Wyoming and wake and wake up in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> something like that something woof, like that woof, woof. Yeah, so, yeah um you but, said um, you you said at one point said, that if you ran any harder you 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 will be running illegal um of course back to controversial company super eagle you know you're able to call up their law department and be like hey you know i need uh you know, I need another shift. Can you guys, you know, do that? And and from what I hear, it they they make it happen. Do do they do they do the same practices over at uh, VL Trucking? Now, let's. I mean, you don't have to say, you know, because we don't want to throw VL Trucking up under the up under the 
up under the bus. I mean, you know, it, it, we we haven't heard online from any other drivers that that has said that they do that. But uh, let's put it like this: Have you uh, was offered some help on your on on your laws on your clock? Um. Well, I, I'm, I've never heard anyone, I've never experienced like anything like a sexy shift actually saying that something similar to what Super Eagle does. I've never experienced that with, with VL trucking. Oh, but dang. I have um, I have been like running, got caught in the, going through some states, delivering a load from North Carolina, going to Alabama, big tornado coming through. Everybody is, everybody laying on their load. I'm stuck on a on a on an interstate, can't pull off nowhere. Just that a third clock run out. They do go in and then alter it like that. But from my understanding, that doing doing that for that particular reason is legal. Right. From my understanding. But as far as doctoring up my my electronic law, no, no, okay. I, I've never experienced that with them. Okay, that's what's I'm up. Gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it all the way 100 with you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, so after you but got finished talking money, to, as far as, the, as, far as you uh got okay. finished talking with the young lady in the accounting, uh, that's when you started to put the pieces <laughs> and the and the puzzles and everything else together. Uh, you did did. I mean, did you make this decision of severing ties with uh, VL Trucking? Did you make this decision with your wife? Did you involve your your wife in the conversation and just be like, "Look, hey, darling, they they you know I've been with them for for a year. It was great in the beginning, but now it took a turn for the worse. You know, I'm going to have to you know make other arrangements." Did you did you talk it over with her? Yeah. Yes, I did. My wife, she was always, I always took her up to par with what, what was going on. Uh, whenever I got my statement, my wife took care of my paperwork for me. So she saw the statement. She, she seen all the paperwork, repairs, bills, everything. So she was up to par and up to date with it. Um, she was in agreement with it. Um, she didn't give me, you know, any, um, you know, she wasn't against it at all in any kind of way whatsoever. She's like, hey, I understand. I understand. You can come home and work at McDonald's and come home with $500 rather nah, than be on the road for nah, two, three weeks and come nah, home with negative money. Nah, we, 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 we can't <laughs> you know? do McDonald's, bro. That's, unless no, 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 you, no, 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 unless you lose you know, your license. Yeah, yeah, but if you still got your license, no, no. man. No, we, we, we can't do McDonald's. No, I still got my license. But My, my license, I still is perfect. But on a but, um, but, but on a flip when, but on a I did oh go ahead go I, ahead I did look at the uh, when I did after speaking to the lady in the accounting department I I sat down and looked at my really did my due diligence and looked at my numbers that night and the next day I delivered my load and called my dispatcher up and um, had a talk with him and he said I threw him up under the bus and. Because I went and called the accountant department, me and him, we started going back and forth. I'm like, bro, how can I throw you up on the bus? And I'm calling the accountant department asking about my money. It's my money. Right. I'm right. not doing you a favor. I'm not doing you a, I mean, you're not doing me a favor. I don't work for you. You work for me. I pay you 20%. But let me ask. Let me ask you and this. You're not since doing you said what that. I you to do. Let me ask you this. Since you said that. Um. Do 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 the 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 dispatchers, you know, it it is up to them to to find the best uh, loads for you guys. Mm -hmm. Would that in turn mm -hmm. makes it make makes it good for them if they get paid off of off of what they find for you? Do do VL trucking dispatchers get paid off of what they find for you, or do they just get paid a? a uh, do they get paid the salary? No, no. From my understanding, they, they get paid off for what they find for us, which is which was mind boggling to me in, in my case. Because if if you're dispatching for me, and you get paid a percentage of the load that I agree to to pick up and deliver, 
then how can you miss putting my low information into the McLeod system so I can upload my information on my end so we both mm. can get our money? We are feeding each mm. other. Okay, so you okay. You have too many drivers. You either have too many drivers that you're working with or you purposely kick me to the curb for whatever the reason may be. I, could, I can't come to any other conclusion because if I'm dispatching and I have eight trucks, 10 trucks, whatever the number may be, and it comes down to payday, I'm going to make sure that all of my drivers have been signed bill of ladies in so we all can get paid. Because nice. if I don't get paid, you can't get paid. How do you continuously miss? Not, I understand a mistake can happen. One week a mistake can happen, but not continuously in a row. Mind you, I experienced this not with just one dispatcher, two dispatchers. Drink the coffee. It'll make you feel better. Two dispatchers. I have text messages. I have emails and proof of, proof of phone calls along with my settlement statement to vouch for it everything I'm sharing with you. Mm. I spoke with the owner. He called when I decided to say, look, I'm done. Maybe I'm coming home. I parked the truck. The truck set for three weeks. The owner called me. Hey, I can notice the truck ain't moved. Where the truck at? I said, oh, the truck is around the corner. I have, I have my own parking spot I was paying for, secure parking, everything. I wasn't worried about that. Okay. The truck set there. He said, well, why the truck ain't moving? Because I'm not moving the truck. I keep coming up in the negative. And I, somebody needs to talk to me and explain to me what's going on. So he gave me this long spiel about the fuel prices, the rates going down, the loads, all, all kinds of things. And I, and I listened to him. This one of the owners. I listened to him. Uninterrupted. When he was done, I said, okay, well, everything you just shared with me, I agree with you. 100%. But what you shared with me is not my issue. You know, I my was about to is, I was about to say that. You know, and and to be honest with you, us drivers, let's be honest drivers, we we really don't want to hear the owner's issues. <laughs> we don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Whatever yeah. whatever going on in the office we we don't want to know what's going on in the office. I mean, to be in all honesty, I mean, if it does affect you shutting the doors, then yeah, we might want to know or get a heads up on that part right there. But as far as, well, I got to do this and the prices is this and I, 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 this, that, and the other, you know, some, you know, some drivers just don't want to hear that, you know. I mean, I, I I signed the paperwork for you know for this amount, and you're you're not living up to your agreement. Now I can understand that, being that you're not living up to your agreement, that would be the reason why. But still, you know, just like you said, you know, my that's 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 really not my problem. But let me right. ask you. But let me ask you this, uh, Aki. Um, when he told you that, and and you know you kind of came back to him and told him, I mean, shouldn't that shouldn't that alarm bell in your head should have went off and be like, um, yeah, maybe it's time to, you know, move along. I mean, I know you. I know, I know you. I know you sever. I know you severed ties with them. But I mean, a after after that conversation, how much longer did you stay with them until you actually pulled the plug? No, that that conversation is when the pull the plug got pulled. I, I was done. Game game recognized game. There you go. Game recognized game. My there thing you. is. When you run a game, if you run a game on me, I might not be able to figure it out in the beginning. In the beginning. But I'll sit back and just watch and wait until the light bulb go off. Because when I, when, I, when I approach you, 
I want to approach you with something I can actually prove to you. And that's what I did. When I spoke to the owner, I broke down how everything happened, even more details than what I'm sharing with you. Detail for detail. How it happened, when it happened, where it happened, everything. He said, okay, I understand that. But what I can offer you is a new dispatch. I can give you my top dispatch. No, well, in the beginning, he from my understanding, the first dispatcher I had was a top dispatcher, and he got a promotion. And mm-hmm. I got the second dispatcher. He mm-hmm. was good. He was a, he was a, one of the best dispatchers. So now you want to give me another dispatcher who's supposed to be your best dispatcher? Come on, they ain't recognized game. No. Well, I can. I uh, you can you can be a uh, um my company drivers. They're they're doing about twenty five, thirty three hundred dollars a week, seventy cents seventy cents a mile. Brother, you already stole money from me. You're a snake. You bit me. And I'm going to allow you to bite me again? No, I'm not. I'm not fooling with you. This business relationship is over. It's done. Mm. I wouldn't tell you to bring the truck back. I could bring the truck back for you such and such day. All that you know is going to be sitting out. I need to make money. Well, that's when I can bring you the truck back. First of all, you... You got five thousand dollars that belong to me in escrow. <laughs> so far as I'm concerned, I should get that money back before I even bring back the truck. <laughs> before I even bring back the truck. Oh man! So we 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 came to we we agreed to a date for me to bring him the truck back. I took everything out the truck. I took pictures of it, right. videos, truck running, so right. forth, so forth, and everything. So it won't be no problem. It's okay. You, you bring it back. I I bring it back when I can gather up me some money. Buy me a one-way ticket to fly back home. Oh, no, I'm going to fly you back. Okay, cool. No problem. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. No problem. I'm going to bring you your truck. Okay. All right. So you hopped up. So came down. You, you, hop, to... you hopped in the truck, brought it back up there to him. Uh, was no, able to... no, 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 you already stole money from me more than once. Okay. Based upon based upon the gentleman and his wife that said that they were stealing anywhere from three to five thousand dollars a week. Right. Say I use that figure, the low end figure, three thousand dollars a week off all the loads per week I was running mm-hmm. for nine months. That'll be a hundred and thirty five thousand dollars that you took from me. Mm. Off the top, that'll be off the top. Okay. Not including the twenty percent on the tail end. Okay, okay, now let's say we did it the high end of the same numbers that that gentleman shared. He said three to five thousand. Say say it was five thousand. Mm-hmm. That's one hundred and eighty five thousand dollars in mm. just nine months. So a key where what you so you, okay, I'm not so going to which, trust you. Okay. No, he said he's going. He said he's going to fly me back home. I'm like, well, I told my wife, well, I'm ready to go. This okay, man ain't sitting no ticket. Okay, if you go, so where's so are are we bringing the truck to him or are we negotiating the final pay here? Man, he, he already came and got his truck. He sent somebody to come down and get his truck. Oh, he's oh okay, okay, okay. So because I I refuse to get it, I, I refuse to get on him because my mind is thinking he stole money from me. He took over hundred thousand dollars from me off the top, possibly. He took money from me on a tail end. You purposely caused me to go in debt for months at a time by not having the the um the um the BOLs uploaded correctly because you have to have an end by a certain time and day of the week in order to get paid on time on Friday. So by you not doing that every week, it, it adds on to the next week. It adds on to the next week. So with all of that going on with the money, how am I going to trust you? To drive all the way back up to Chicago, give me the keys to your truck, and you're gonna give me a ticket to fly back home. But what Why about the? Trust you? But what about the money? Uh, okay, so uh, okay, uh, all right. So a key, I you, don't you get said, the money. It's, but, it's, it's a whole lot to this, bro. <laughs> uh, okay, so they, uh, okay, so do, do they owe you some money here? I'm I'm hearing a lot I'm, of money. I'm I'm money. hearing I'm hearing that they owe you some money. They owe you a a final paycheck. So let's fast forward to that. Did they did they give you did they send you a final paycheck or anything like that? Because and let me ask you this, no, being sir. that 
they sent somebody down to come and get their truck. They they didn't hit you with uh with an abandonment or anything like that, did they? Um, I'm not sure. But if they did, I'm hoping I can fight that in, in court. Find find because... out find out about that. Make sure you go to the website Hire Right and and uh request okay. for your DAC report, man, because if they came and got the truck they can claim that you abandoned uh that you abandoned the truck but like you said you could probably Uh, you know, if you apply for another job and yada, 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 you know, you could probably explain to them like, hey, you know, they they knew where their truck was at and they knew where to come and get in. And this is and if you have like, you know, verifiable conversation, i.e. text messages and all like that, you know, uh, yeah, email. I, I got all that. Yeah, email. You can send it off to the next company and and prove that you didn't abandon it. But basically, go to hire right and and uh and and uh file for your DAC report over there to make sure that you know they didn't hem you up in any kind of way. All right, so all right. no money. Nah. No, no, no money in all of this. No like money. they, they, they owe you a no money at they, all. They technically owe you a last paycheck, which they didn't, which they didn't give to you. How how long since they came and got the truck, and and uh, that they didn't pay you? Like how long has it been now? Well, no, when they came and got the truck, all of this took place about three months ago. From the time that I came drove from Ohio to home to stop and you know park the truck and not get back in it again, that was about three weeks altogether. But from the time they came and got the truck, it's been three months ago. So this this didn't just happen last month. Okay, so we're we're looking at about three you know months. Saying? So we're looking at about. We're looking at about three months that they owe you for your last paycheck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And, I mean, it all depends on, and then also you have to look at it like this. It also look, depends on how you're going to look at the numbers because when I did my when I did deliver my last load in Ohio, Cincinnati, I was in a negative. I was in a negative because of the fuel. I'm constantly getting charged every week for fuel which supposed to get, come off of my bill of lading, but they don't have the bill of lading. They're steadily charging me for the fuel. So if you're in the accountant's department, how I keep using all this fuel, but technically speaking, since they don't have any bill of lading, bill of lading from me, why is he using all this fuel? They never, that question never seems to dawn on them. He's using $2,000 a week in fuel, but he's not delivering any loads. So what is he doing? Driving around with an empty truck? So they constantly, so if I don't have the bill of latents to cover the fuel for this week, that that dollar amount is going to be flipped over to the following week along with the following week fuel for that for that week. So now I'm looking at two weeks of fuel. I don't have the money before the, for the for the um the following week. So that those two weeks gonna flip over to the third week. That third week come now the bill of latents are hitting. When the bill of latents hit, all the money I would have gotten paid is covering the fuel that that never got paid, which brings me into the negative. You see what I'm saying? You know, I I feel that that's why I said I need, I need to get a these, lawyer involved. I I feel that the leasing with these with these black op companies, man, I I think they just they 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 seeping off of of the naive, you know. Oh, yeah, that's that's what I'm looking at because like uh, any any anybody that that been in this game for quite a while would see the 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 would see all of that. 
But the naive, mm-hmm. the naive drivers, the newer drivers that think they're going to get in there and they're going to own their truck within a couple of years and this, that, and the third, they taking advantage of of those guys with the exactly. with the with, with the fuel and with the with the fuel with the cheap rates and everything like that. Mind wow. you, they're not. They used VL trucking used to show the Raycon, from my understanding. Before I got there, they used to show the Raycon, but then a lot of drivers started to kick up a lot of dust. And they stopped showing the Raycons because the driver started to look at their Raycon and saying, hey, my money isn't right. So now VL trucking don't show the Raycon to the drivers for that very reason. But when I asked to see the Raycon, oh, oh no, oh, no. The company you, you mentioned maybe three or four times, Super Eagle. Super Eagle, Eagle they mm-hmm. called me, sent me text messages, and they're saying they're trying to get me to come drive for them. I'm like, no. Mm-mm. I said, you, and I ask them, you I walk, question, you you'll like, be walking like right out of you you you'll be walking right out of one problem <laughs> and into right. another, bro. Into this, right? And they say they don't show the Raycon. I'm never ever driving with anyone that does not show the Raycon. Right. I know it's gonna cut my my choices down to a bare minimum, but when I say I went all in, I literally you, went you all went in. All in. Me. And it wasn't about me not saving money. I was saving money. It wasn't about me. You know, uh, I was starting to live off my credit card. So, come on now. I'm, when I'm all in, I'm all in. Right. So, and I was ready to put somebody behind the wheel for me. But I had refused to put, I had two drivers. I turned them away. I was like, no, I'm not, I can't put you right now because now i'm starting to, to notice some things and i refuse to put a wheel when i know for a fact that the money may not be there for them to pay you i'm not going to do to you what they're doing to me i'm not cut like that all right you so, so you you mentioned that you was going to get uh that you're going to try and get a lawyer involved and again a key man thank you for coming on right. and uh sharing your testimony with us man i really do appreciate it i'm enjoying the conversation uh but before we get on up out of here man you you, again you did mention about getting the lawyer involved where where are you at in 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 getting that uh taken care of i keep running into a dead wall because all the lawyers that i reach out to they only want to do business if i was involved in an accident so I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to find out if there's a particular type of lawyer I should be, be looking for, or do I get one in that particular state, or can I get one in the state of Georgia to represent me, or even do I have a case? In my opinion, I feel I do, but legally speaking, do I have a case? Can I get something out of this? So that's where I'm at now. I'm constantly searching the internet, trying to get get pointed in the right direction to get the ball rolling on this. Because I really want to do it as fast as possible because from what I hear, they are they are eventually going to go out of business because they're, one of the drivers had a, a real horrible accident and they want to get, they, they're expected to get sued for a lot of money. Yeah, they, and they have already started the process of they, like opening another truck company yeah, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they, they're not going to, they're not going to go out of business. They just, they just going to change the name. That's all. Yeah, yeah. That's all. Yeah, that's, they're yeah, just going to change. They, you, they're, they're, they're on, on paper, it'll make it like, you know, V, you know, VL trucking, uh, filed bankruptcy and they're, you know, shuttered their doors or whatever, whatever. But be, behind the scenes, they already got somebody in the place of putting, you know, and changing Jimmy McGill to Saul Goodman. I'm, I'm going to work up under my, yeah. you know, doing my doing business as that. That's all. Yeah. But uh, a key, you know, yeah. much success to you. You know what I'm saying? In in getting that taken care of. I, I hope you get that taken care of. I, I, I am very saddened that, you know, not only companies like that, but black ops companies in in general that take advantage 
of of naive drivers. They don't pay the drivers. They strand the drivers. They, you know, it's so much, so much, so much going on that you will hear story, you know, horror stories like this, and they still are able to bring people into their fold. God damn, Jimmy. This some serious gourmet shit. Me and Vincent would have been satisfied with some freeze-dried tasteless choice, right? <laughs> and he brings this serious gourmet shit on us. What flavor is this? Knock it off, Chewy. So, yeah. Again, yeah. man, like I said, again, thank you very much for coming on. I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, shout out to you and your wife. And I, I, I hope um, I hope everything work out for you. And again, like I said, get that get that DAC report, bro. You may, make sure you get that. Yeah, I'm going to do that you don't, right away. You, yeah, you don't, do you right don't right want away. them to, you, you, you know, they already mess. They already mess with your money. You don't want them to mess with your your future endeavors, you know what I'm saying? You know, get you blacklisted because right. they they might put an abandonment on your on your DAC report, man. That that'd be that that'd be another yes, slap yes. in the face. Hey, yes, yes, I understand that. And um, and as far as that and as far as that's concerned, and I'm not, and I don't want to make it sound as if I don't care because I do care. But right now, I'm so mentally drained and and exhausted from this whole experience. I really don't even trust to drive for another trucking company right now. I have companies all the time reaching out to me and either I don't answer the phone or I just tell them no because of my experience. Right, right now, I don't care. Maybe in the, maybe tomorrow I will care, but as of right now, bro, I, I, that I, don't, even, I don't even care about the trucking, trucking industry right now as far as me <sighs> driving. Wow. I would never say don't ever tell anyone don't get involved or anything like that because you can be successful. It can be a life changing event for, for, for individuals, which it, I'm sure it is. But my, I would never, it's my personal experience in someone else's mind to prevent them from going out and, and, and accomplishing and achieving their dreams. I was just, I'm just thankful for you allowing me to come on your show so I can share my, my experience. You're so very well. eye opener. To 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 those that were, um, like like you said yourself, at VR trucking experience, and people are still going to VR trucking. But for those that continue to go to VR trucking, uh, take your time, read over your paperwork. I don't care about them rushing you or anything because you're gonna be, you know, responsible for for everything that happens when you get behind that wheel, and. I want anybody to, whether it's VO trucking or any other company, to experience what I experienced. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, Aki, man. Thank you very much. You have a you have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day, man. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Even though this you will too. be this this will probably be posted after the holidays, and everybody will be like. Damn, like I what do you mean happy new year? No, it's already new. Yeah, 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 yeah. We 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 get we getting it in early, y'all, and, and it'll be posted later. That's what I'm saying. But uh, but again, bro, thank you very much for coming on, man. And and again, uh let's uh let's let's catch back up after you know you know, after you decide to if if you know if if your head is right. You know, let's let's uh, catch back up and see where you at in a couple of months. Oh, sure, sure thing. Yeah, yeah. In the meantime, like I said, I'm going to um, immediately go and check my uh, report and see if there's been a hold on me or not. And, That's um, and I would definitely keep you updated. All right, I'll bro. Keep you updated. All right, man. Well, Merry Christmas. Right. Uh, happy holidays to you and your family, man. And uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks a lot. Happy holidays to you and yours. The run, the go, the pack of tequila, mix it all up, and I swear that I need none of them in my pocket if it ain't about the 